I'm Amanda Schoenfeld. Um, I actually work specifically for the Technology Transformation Service, which I'll explain the difference between TTS and 18F in my part of the presentation. Uh, I am on the talent team, so I help to bring people into TTS and 18F and hire people to join our team. My name is Nick Ng, and I'm a designer. I'm Ann Peterson. My pronouns are they, them. I'm the director of experience design for 18F. And I'm Andrew Supernaw. I'm in our product management group. My pronouns are he and him. So we've got, um, let's see, we've got about a 20 minute presentation today. I think we'll each take about five minutes and walk you through a few different things, which I think Amanda will tell you about. All right, this is what we're going to cover this evening. I mentioned that <clears throat> I'm part of the Technology Transformation Service, so I'm going to explain what that is. Then we're going to spend a little bit of time focusing on 18F and talking about some specific examples from work that's gone on at 18F, including Open Forest Service and uh, login.gov, and we'll also have some time for Q&A. <clears throat> so who is TTS? Uh, this is a really great graphic of TTS. Uh, TTS is at the top here. Essentially, we are part of the General Services Administration, and TTS has different parts, or sort of business units, if you want to call them that. Starting from left to right, <coughs> on the left we have the IT Modernization Centers of Excellence. This is a group of folks who are co-located with their partners in DC, so they specifically focus on enterprise-wide engagements. Their first a uh, partner is USDA, and they focus in on very specific centers of excellence where they work on enterprise-wide transformation. Some examples of centers of excellence that they focus in on are data and analytics and customer experience. <coughs> and then 18F, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about 18F because we're going to dive into some of the projects here tonight. So um, we'll get a little bit deeper on 18F later. The Presidential Innovation Fellows Program is a year-long fellowship that specifically pulls people in from the private sector to work in government. It is also a co-located program, physically located in Washington, D.C. So the fellows spend a year with their partner, and they essentially, when they apply to work uh, with PIF, they interview with potential partners through their interview process. <clears throat> and then the Office of Products and Programs is another part of TTS. This is uh, essentially free programs and products that are available to federal agencies. So data.gov is an example, code.gov is another example, and they are fully appropriated. So federal agencies do not have to actually pay for them. And the Office of Acquisition handles purchasing things for the Technology Transformation Service and also provides consulting on acquisition services within the federal government. All right, we're gonna move on to ATNF now. So 18F is uh, a consultancy for the government inside the government. So we're federal government's employees. We are distributed all over the country, unlike some of the other programs you heard just a second ago. This photo is from our last big in-person gathering a few years back. So we partner with agencies to build and buy digital services to fulfill the needs of the portion of the public that they serve. We create a unified team, so we pair our technical expertise with our partners, partner agency's subject expertise. This also sets the agency up to be able to carry the work forward and keep serving the public well once we're out of the picture. So broadly speaking, the things that we do fall into these three buckets. So improving public-facing services could be things like redesigning or launching a new website. Uh, implementing new laws or mandates could be collecting or sharing data with the public. And the last one there could be digitizing perhaps a tedious manual process, one of which I'll tell you a little bit more about in a second. So we create uh, the core practices that we practice, we bring to every project. And I assume most of you all know what agile means, user-centered design means, um, but I want to point out the last one in very specific. Because building in the open means the majority of what we produce is public. So you can go view our GitHub repositories to see our usability testing, to see our roadmaps. 
to see our code, um, which also means working uh, using open source, soft source software. All of this is done with the intent to streamline communication, build trust with the public, encourage good documentation and coding practices, and it also makes it much easier to hand off the project and make it more sustainable going forward. So this is also how we decide on which projects to take up. If our partners cannot work with these, us in these ways, we usually turn down that collaboration. So they have to be willing to change their methods if they're not already doing this, to get a little more kind of modern in their practices, um, bring everything a little bit more up to speed. So as one example, I'll talk about the US Forest Service. When we started wor working with the US Forest Service, a good almost like three years ago now, almost, um, it was both in response to Congress's interest in getting the public easier access to public lands and demand from the public themselves, so grassroots, like individuals, mushroom foragers who wanted easier access to permits to go gather in the forest. There was also a USDA kind of tech modernization initiative at play here. So previously, you would have to go buy permits in person to go cut down a Christmas tree. So one person had to drive 30 miles to get one. And then, you know, you, know, you have to check the hours of that location before you go there. So location and availability um, were the, the key issues here. I'll, there were other permits. Um, that had access to like PDF and Word and email, but it was still a super manual process. So we did research on how to fix these problems and found where to start. And the easiest chunk to bite off was Christmas tree permits, plus non-commercial and temporary outfitters permits. So this is what we created. So Christmas tree permitting is on the left. The other two are on the right. The one on the left is live. The others are in development. Christmas tree permits launched this past November with four pilot forests. So Colorado, Montana, Oregon, and Wyoming are the states that they're in. And this season, open forests sold permits for just over 6,000 uh, 6, trees. So there's more to come this upcoming season, but that was kind of our first shot at it. Um, and for non-commercial and temporary outfitters, this is still in development, but we're running our account creation through login.gov. And for more information on login.gov, I'm going to hand it over to Nick. Hey everybody, I'm Nick, and I've been working on login.gov. I'm a designer, um, I do all the visual components, and um, some of my teammates that I've been working with is John, can you wave John? <laughs> hey everybody. And he's been working with me on login.gov, focusing on the UX research. So what is login.gov? We'll dive in here. So on the right, this is an example of what someone might see as they're logging in. And login.gov was launched in April of 2017. And the whole reason is because it simplified secure access to government services to the public. It was very much helping with um, logging in and authentication with identity proofing. It also reduced the cost for agencies and taxpayers. And as of last month, there are 13 million, million users in production sites, and it's growing. So the government had a, quite an identity problem for a while. And this is something that we've been working on in the US with our identity problem. And currently, some of the agencies, even within um, the bureaucracy, everyone has their own login systems. Every agency has their own, and there are subsystems underneath that. They all have their own security and privacy systems. And so now we are trying to focus on our end-to-end -end encryption, and so that making it secure transit between different agencies, and also that we can do penetration tests. And then for the privacy sector, we're focusing on disclosure. How much information do people want disclosed to the government? And also, how much information does the government store? And we're also wanting to clarify, being very clear about what is our transparency and what are our privacy policies so people can feel confident to use our systems and so that they can trust the systems that the government is setting up. And you can see here, this is before login.gov. 
Um, every agency has its own systems in place, and it's expensive. There are duplicate accounts, and it's not consistent, and it's kind of dated UX experience, and there's limited interagency collaboration. And so we are trying to balance those scales and improve. And so you can see on the right, this is what we're aiming for. All of those um, agencies that have their own security systems and their own privacy management, we're trying to centralize all of those so that it can be run under one system. And that will be best for everybody. And so for security and privacy and, us and usability, we'd like to balance and be able to tell the story so that you can, you can see the difference. So this is an example. So there's someone who maybe is a, a transfer student, maybe an international student, and they want to um, go to university, and then they want to get employed, and they find a job, and then they want to become a citizen. Every single one of those steps, all of the information is housed in a different place. And all of those steps have to go through different processes, and a lot of them are duplicate. And so, we are trying to get all of those into one system, so one user, one account. And also the expensive side of things, we're hoping this will become much more affordable because we'll have multifaceted um, authentication programs and that will reduce the load in all of those multiple accounts. And we also will be able to deploy better user research. And also our security and privacy practices will be a lot better. And our limited interagency collaboration will be seamless. It will be more efficient. And it will save so much time for people, and also just for the general public as well. And so how can you get involved? So this is one way that you can get involved. And this is a great opportunity for all of you um, this is our bug bounty program that we have. And so those of you who are friendly hackers, you are welcome to get involved into this. And so you can try to hack into our login.gov system. And so if you find some critical errors or some low errors, and it will pay if you find those errors. And this is also including 18f.gov and data.gov and also the cloud.gov. And on the right side, this is an app for login.gov. And this is an open repo that you can look at it. You can contribute to it. You can you know, look up and see, dig into it and see how it works. So we've, at a high level, what we've attempted to do is say that within the federal government, where we work, we've got GSA, and then there's TTS, and then there's 18F. And then we've got an example of a project that we've developed and an example of a product that we used, a shared service that we used to develop that and other products. Um, so if your curiosity is piqued and you would like to learn more, um, here are a few ways that you could do that. So on our 18F site, which is 18f.gsa.gov, there's a projects page, I believe it's under, yeah, what we deliver. So you can see case studies of different projects we've worked on. Um, these could be collaborations with, like our collaboration with US Forest Service, with different federal agencies. Um, so the Federal Election Commission is up there, Department of Interior, Treasury, State, um, yeah, all sorts of um, consulting that we've done with other federal agencies. Um, I'll point out that also up there is um, a, a handful of products, other products. So there's the U.S. Web Design System, which is a design system for federal websites. Um, more on login.gov is up there, so if you're curious to hear more about login, you can go there. Uh, Federalist, which helps agencies build websites quickly and easily while meeting compliance requirements. Um, and also cloud.gov, which was mentioned a few minutes ago. It's a hosting platform that helps um, take care of infrastructure and security compliance requirements. Um, so essentially, if you're on a federal team, the idea is that you can spend more time understanding your users, more time prototyping, testing, um, making sure that the, what you're building matches the user need in less time working on um, very important um, uh, but what can be time time consuming compliance and security and infrastructure concerns. Um, as part of the, the description for this talk, we originally said we were going to talk more about cloud.gov. 
that's all that we're going to say right now about cloud.gov. We condense this for time. If you're somebody that wants to know more about cloud.gov, please come talk afterwards or, or raise your hand during the Q&A. Um, so what else? We've got a blog. Uh, we really like to write. We like to document. We like to blog. Um, so 18F blog, also on our website. Uh, a handful of, of posts I thought were pretty interesting or that I thought this audience might be interested in. Um, some posts about modular contracting, um, when to use commercial off-the-shelf software or COTS and, and when not to. Um, I would say if you read two things on our blog from March, there's a post that's our four favorite projects from 2018, including work that we did for Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services, uh, the U.S. Marine Corps, the U.S. Navy, and, um, and FedRAMP. And our executive director, so this is Angela Coulter, the direct, executive director of 18F, wrote uh, in March a happy fifth birthday post talking about where we've been uh, and where, we're, where we might be headed. Um, so you can see more of those, those and more in our blog. Um, lots of posts there about design, research, development, DevOps, infrastructure, um, uh, ATO's authority to operate, um, which you need to get to generally launch a, a federal website uh, to the public and or using public data. So if you're interested in that sort of stuff, that's the blog. It's a blog. Um, then there, as, uh, as Nick mentioned, or Anne, I think Anne actually mentioned, we've got our GitHub repos. So 1,100 repositories on GitHub. Um, we do default to the open. So whether we're working with a partner or something internally, um, unless there's a strong reason for us not to make something open source, we typically make it open source. Let's see. So yeah, lots of repos that you can look through. If you're curious about open forest, FS Open Forest, so Forest Service Open Forest, or FS Open Forest uh, ops are up there. Um, the login uh, the login repos are all under identity, or mostly under identity, so if you're curious to see more about login, you can, you can go there. Cloud.gov is under CG. Um, yeah, and you can see our code, you can use our code, you can open a pull request and submit, uh, submit a potential change to our code base. We've had more than a handful of folks who have submitted PRs to, I think Alex submitted a PR. Um, so this is Alex Sobel, he's in our engineering chapter. Um, uh, yeah, submitted a PR to 18F before joining. So um, yeah, the code is up there. You can look at it, you can review it, you can help hold us accountable. You can open issues uh, all on um, our GitHub, GitHub series of repos. And then join TTS. Um, so there'll be upcoming roles that are posted here, information about the application process, uh, how to best format a resume and applying to either us or another federal, um, I don't know if we would advise on other federal jobs, but generally form information about formatting government resumes is, is up there. Um, I will say for jobs, we do typically, most people coming in typically have six or more years of, of professional experience in the industries in which we're working, so that's typically what we look for. Um, so if that is you or someone you know now, please take a look, please come talk to us. If that's you or someone you know down the road, please keep us in mind. Um, and uh, and yeah, if it turns out there's a fit, we'd love to. You know, we need we need folks to help do the work that we're doing to help transform how the government delivers services to the public. Uh, there's also a mailing list up there, which you can say you're interested in product positions or design positions, um, strategy positions. You can you know check that on the mailing list, and our talent team typically gets in touch pretty quickly and stays in touch. Uh, also, since, since I assume most, most people here are either in Chicago or around Chicago, uh, we have been experimenting on different ways to like, get together and, and bond as a team. So uh, the current iteration of that is a monthly breakfast. Um, so if you're somebody that likes to get up and have breakfast and talk to folks, um, come let us know. It's once a month. It's in the loop. Um, or West, it's in the West Loop. And yeah, we can get together, have some pancakes or coffee, and get to know each other, get to know what you're doing, you can get to know us. Uh, so if you're interested in that, come talk to us afterwards. If you're less of a breakfast person, more of like a coffee or, or an adult beverage, let us know. Some of us are night owls as well. I am one of them. I'm sure we could do that too. Give it up for our presenters.